This video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. I am here to answer the age-old question, MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, but this year with Apple's product releases, that answer is more complicated than it's ever been, which is why I wanna make a video that matches its energy. So yeah, in this video, we're gonna be discussing product design, portability, performance, and ultimately productivity with regard to these laptops in order to help you decide which one is right for you. All right, first up, let's talk about some general hardware aspects and product design features of these laptops. First and foremost, we have to address weight and thickness. And it's important here because the MacBook Air is called Air for a reason. It's under three pounds, it's very slim and trim, and it tapers very nicely to your wrist if you're typing, especially in your lap. Whereas the MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch is much thicker and heavier. Um, this comes in at 3.5 pounds and up, especially if you get the 16 inch. And yeah, it's just thicker. And for typing, for example, you do have a little bit more elevation for your wrist. So that is something you need to consider here. This is a lot thicker and heavier for a reason, and this is a lot thinner and lighter as the name suggests. The port situation with these devices is also very different. With the MacBook Air, you just get two USB-C ports for data, display, and power, and a headphone jack as well. Whereas with the MacBook Pro, you get those ports and more, including an additional USB-C port, an HDMI port, SD card reader, and the MagSafe power connector, which is really, really nice because if somebody decides to trip on your charging cable here um, with the MacBook Air and previous MacBook Pros, if it's plugged into a USB-C port, your laptop is going down with the cable that's tripped, whereas with the a MagSafe power connector, it's magnetic. Um, so not only are you saving a IO port for data or display or something else, um, this also just rips out like that. So your laptop won't go down with the uh, person that you know trips over your cable here. And uh, also I have to mention the SD card a reader is so, so nice. If you are somebody that writes data and needs to read data from SD cards here, it's as simple as plugging it in. I mean, like a lot of laptops have this feature, but Apple brought it back and it's a huge deal, especially if you are a creative you know, uh, professional taking photos or videos here. The HDMI port is also really nice if you wanna plug into displays and projectors and such TVs as well. Um, so yeah, definitely something to consider here. Also, um, the displays are definitely different here, and I'll try to boil this down as much as I can. Basically, you get a just more bare bones display here. It's bright enough for casual tasks. You have bezels here. It has enough screen refresh rate to you know be okay. I mean, 60 hertz is the standard, and this still has that here, whereas the MacBook Pro's display has slimmer bezels. You do get a notch, which I'll address in a minute here, but it is significantly brighter in everyday situations, and also if you edit HDR content or work with it, it gets extremely bright in those conditions, although that's, you know, more rare. Um, you also get a higher refresh rate, just like you do with the iPad Pro, which is, you know, a nice thing, but it also just makes your everyday experience a little bit more smooth. So if you like that on the iPhone 13 Pro or the iPad Pro, if you own one, this is definitely a consideration as well. Um, as for the notch here, this has to do with the camera. On previous gen MacBook Airs and Pros, you got a potato quality, just trash camera. But here, um, this notch accommodates a 1080p camera, which is better for you know video chatting and also a photo booth and just taking pictures and videos here. It's not a reason to upgrade, but it's definitely a nice addition here. And the notch also brings another interesting display aspect here um, with regard to the menu bar, if I can open this up here. So when you are full screen in apps like Safari, for example, or really any app, um, normally, with a previous gen MacBook Pro, if you go to the menu bar, it sort of has to push down the window to accommodate that. Here, um, because you have more screen real estate, the menu bar sort of lives at the sides of the notch. So when you hover your mouse over here, the window doesn't change, but you can uh, you, you can access the menu items. So even though with the 14 inch, you're not getting a ton more screen real estate, that definitely just makes a difference, I would say. Not a huge difference, um, but it's a nice addition. Also too here, we're not gonna talk about size, but having a 16 inch display you know, offers an even better productivity experience, but again, that's a whole, you know, portion of this video here. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the keyboard situation here, and the MacBook Air and new MacBook Pro surprisingly have a pretty similar situation because they both have the magic keyboard with a function row, no touch bar in sight, which I honestly prefer here. The only difference is, is that the function row of keys here is bigger, and the touch ID key is a bit bigger as well, making them easier to press. I do enjoy that. You also, of course, get this sort of blacked out paint job, which is nice, but again, not a reason to upgrade or anything. Also, too, I will make a note, 
The track pads are the same size, at least with the 14 and 13 inch that we have here. So there's no difference there, as well as no difference in the tactility and tightening experience here. Again, I will say though, as I said in the sort of design aspect part of this video, um, the fact that you have slimmer or a slimmer body here with the MacBook Air makes it easier to type on your lap and just on a table here, you have more elevation here, which does kind of cut into your wrists a little more, I will say here. And last up, I want to talk about speaker quality. Um, with the MacBook Air, you do get good speaker quality here. Um, decent sound, decent, decent mids, highs, bass, all of that more than good enough for casual stuff like you know watching Netflix or YouTube but if you're doing a little more intensive stuff with audio or you just want better you know speakers the MacBook Pro even at the 14 inch the 16 inch has better speakers has more bassy just rich sound in general here so ultimately while you are getting more with the MacBook Pro the drawback is it is thicker and heavier however with the MacBook Air sure it's more bare bones and ultimately less powerful as I will touch on later in this video it's really nice to handle it's super lightweight and we'll talk more about this with regard to portability Next up, let's touch on portability here. And literally, as I just said, the MacBook Pro, especially if you have a 16 inch variant, is thicker and heavier, which may be better suited to be transported in a backpack. That sentence was overly complicated for no reason. However, the MacBook Air, as I said as well, is lighter and is better, honestly, suited to fit in a smaller bag or can do that, you know, so if you're somebody who wants to pack light or have one of these type, you know, business bags, you can do that a little more easily without feeling like you're carrying a hand weight around, although I probably need to. Um, but yeah, let's uh, go outside here and kind of check out how these are on the go, if you will. Once again, this video is brought to you by Clean My Mac X. And for those of you forking out a lot of cash for a shiny new Mac, keeping it running its absolute best is definitely a priority. With Clean My Mac X, you have access to 30 plus tools that help you solve the most common Mac issues. For starters, with the optimization feature, you can see exactly what your Mac is doing and kill tasks with an interface that's way more straightforward than Apple's built-in activity monitor. With malware removal, you can scan your Mac for adware, cryptocurrency miners, and malware, as well as instantly remove them if found. Space Lens is another great feature that allows you to see what files are taking up the most space on your computer. Very helpful when you don't want to manually snoop through Finder. And finally, with Smart Scan, you can easily examine and rid of unnecessary system log files and user cache that slow your Mac down. Click my link in the video description to download a free trial of the app if you're interested. So yeah, as I've been saying, because the MacBook Air is slimmer and trimmer, it's more of a spontaneous device that you can just pull out of a bag or a backpack and, you know, just put on your lap very comfortably here. Like, this is totally fine. Like, I could work like this if I really wanted to. Whereas with the MacBook Pro, even though you could technically do the same, it's not as comfortable and you might have to plug in due to some battery performance um, issues or just rather limitations, which I'll touch on later in this video here. But yeah, when you're pulling out a MacBook Pro, specifically a 16 inch one, you can use it on your lap. It's definitely more comfortable to use it at a table, for example, any kind of table you want. You know, this is a picnic table, but yeah, I tend to use it more like this plugged in, especially if I'm doing anything intensive. But yeah, that's sort of the usage case difference here on the go. The MacBook Air is a lot more spontaneous. You can just pull it out whenever you want. If I can honestly get to it here. There we go. Great on the lap once again. But the MacBook Pro is more of a you know device used on a surface. It just feels better that way. And uh, yeah, if you have a bigger device, it makes even more sense to do that. All right, next up, I want to talk about performance between these two laptops. And to make it simple for you, essentially, the MacBook Pro is the more powerful device, but it gets lesser battery life, especially in the 14-inch model. Whereas the MacBook Air is a battery life champion, but it has lesser power. And that's not to say the M1 chip isn't very capable, but if you're doing intensive tasks, the M1 Pro and up is going to treat you a little better and give you a little more headroom. Um, also, too, I want to touch on some spec differences here for your reference. The MacBook Air is configurable up to 16 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage, whereas the MacBook Pro is configurable up to a better processor, 64 gigs of memory and eight terabytes of storage. So essentially you're getting, you know, four times the amount of, I guess, you know, RAM and also storage and increased performance. I don't know if it's four times, but it might be. Um, I think with regard to GPU, it would be because the M1 has an eight core GPU and the M1 Max has a 32 core GPU. So upwards of four X the performance there. So um, what does this mean to you though? You know, this is all a bunch of numbers. You know, I'm not going to show you Geekbench scores or anything. I want to just give you sort of a real world explanation as to what you can expect. With the M1, even the seven core model, it's amazing for emails, you know, document typing, media consumption, 
consumption, casual tasks and stuff, even some light photo editing here. Here's a Photoshop um, composition with multiple layers of high resolution you know, images. We also have a Final Cut project here, albeit with 720p and 1080p video, but it's handling it, this MacBook is handling it very well, even with eight gigs of RAM and seven core you know, GPU. Um, this is fine, this is a more casual edit. You know? So if you are a bit of a creative, you know, not necessarily a professional, this is good for you. And of course, for a lot of more casual tasks, this is perfect. Um, however, if you are doing more intensive stuff like I do, even with YouTube, and of course I do freelance stuff as well, or I'm trying to you know, do some more experimental type content, possibly with 8K footage in the future. You know, also if you do advanced you know, development, 3D rendering, anything that involves a lot of GPU and CPU horsepower, the MacBook Pro 14 inch or 16 inch with M1 Pro or up to M1 Max is gonna be great because it offers you a lot of headroom and you might not use all of this horsepower at once, but it gives you the creative freedom to just do something without having to worry about your laptop catching up. And with the M1 chip, that's definitely the case. I used a 13 inch MacBook Pro for a while editing everything, and I would regularly hit that performance threshold. But with something like this, and I have a maxed out version with 64 gigs of RAM and all that, you don't necessarily need that, but in my experience, it offers you know a ton of headroom to where I really don't run into any performance issues whatsoever. But you have to know if you need this. You know, if you are a more casual user, like I said, doing emails, business type stuff, you don't need this. But if you are doing anything above casual, you know, creative, you know, professional type work, and if you are a creative professional, time is money, and you're gonna wanna have at least the M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM, if not more, you know, and also more storage on the inside as well. And last up here, let's talk about productivity or more specifically using these as laptops. Of course, you can attach these two displays, but what's the point of having a laptop if you can't use it on the go? And in the case of the MacBook Air, it's super lightweight and refreshing to have in your lap here. And it's perfect for single tasks and some split screen multitasking, as you can see here in Safari, for example, you definitely have enough room to do that. And I've used this form factor for years for school, for example, and have been very, very comfortable. In the case of the MacBook Pro, it's definitely less comfortable to have in your lap. And I may have said this already, but even though the, even though the display is bigger here and you do get the advantage of having the menu bar up here, the screen size is not big enough, at least with the 14 inch, to make a huge difference in terms of productivity. If I do split screen multitasking over here, for example, I mean, sure, there's like an extra 0.7 inches, but it doesn't make too much of a difference here. This is still a pretty, I wouldn't say small laptop, but smaller laptop, at least compared to the 16 inch, which I also have. I use this primarily for my work. And though this thing is a behemoth, I don't know. Even though it's uncomfortable, at least the screen size sort of justifies itself, you know what I mean? Because you just get so much more screen real estate. The additional two inches does make a difference, as sus as that sounds. But um, what I'm getting at here is if you use applications that have interfaces where you have to have multiple menus open, and also too, if you just want to have more of a window for productivity here, I can look up news and, I don't know, Apple News at the same time, just so I can show you what split screen multitasking looks like. As you can see here, you have two really big windows to work on, which is really, really great. So beyond just creative work, of course, which benefits from a larger display, if you are just a big productivity head and you wanna make sure you have enough space to do research and read and write and whatever you're doing, buying the 16 inch just for that reason isn't the worst idea. Even if you're not gonna use the M1 Pro, um, the fact that you can buy the M1 Pro with 512 gigs of uh, storage um, for $2,500, which is the same cost as the mid-tier 14 inch um, is nice. It's a great value again if you want that big display. But again here, even though the MacBook Pro is a great device for productivity, specifically the um, 16 inch, you can't beat the sort of portability and in-lap feel of the MacBook Air. It's just really, really great for writing. I love this thing for school and such. And the display is definitely big enough. It's not, you know, bezel-less or notched or whatever, you know, whatever makes the MacBook Pro nicer. But again here, um, if I'm gonna have a smaller laptop in my lap, I'd rather have this one. And again, if I'm gonna have a MacBook Pro in my lap, honestly, I'd rather justify, once again, the more uncomfortable, thicker body with a bigger display that I actively benefit from, especially when I bring my work home or work on the couch just like this. 
So what have we learned here today? Well, if you can take advantage of the MacBook Pro models, 14 inch or 16 inch, even though they are expensive, they are worth it. So, I mean, I'm somebody who can, and I am absolutely positively satisfied with my purchase. Wouldn't want a different machine. However, for most intents and purposes, for more casual tasks, the MacBook Air with the M1 chip, even the baseline is a killer deal. And if you can get one of these for $900 or less, I definitely would this holiday season. So. Uh, yeah, this is the laptop for most people. And even though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, it's, I think, the best value Mac on the market right now. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. Check out my link to clean my Mac X in the video description. It helps to keep your Mac running at its maximum potential. Leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.